The most versatile way to animate the bulldozer tracks is to create an armature and provide the weightings for the vertices for each of the links in the chain and have two, uh, an armature for the left track and the right track. This allows different speeds to be given or reversing one track against the other one. So the first step is to remove the modifiers on the, the link object, curve modifier and a mirror modifier. In edit mode, rotate the vertices so track is the right way up. We'll see that actually uh, there's a, a constraint applied to the object and the, the displacement of each of the links needs to be set to zero but we'll do that at a later stage when we're assigning the vertices to the vertex groups for each bone. With the armature selected in edit mode Add a single bone, which won't be parented by anything else. Reduce the size of the bone by changing the tail Z value in the bone properties and then duplicate it. I've got 30 links in this chain, so I need to duplicate it 29 times. Now in pose mode, select each bone in turn and add a bone constraint to follow path, setting the target as the Bezier curve for the track and check the follow curve. If you set the try setting the offset to different values, you'll see that 100, a value of 100 will offset it all the way to the beginning of the track again. So we've got 30 links, so we're going to need to move each link by 10 over 3, 3.333 recurring. Add all of the links. It's easiest to add all of the bone constraints. And then when we finish doing that, go to the first bone and right click on the offset and copy that value as a new driver. And then go to the second bone and paste into the offset a new driver. Then um, right click on the offset and edit the driver. Change its type to a scripted expression. And then in the expression field, add plus 10 divided by 3 to the offset being read from the first bone position. You could animate each of the bones separately, but this way we just need to animate the first bone and all of the other bones will stay the same offset from it. Over the second bone offset, right click and copy driver and then in the offsets for each of the following bones, paste that driver as the offset and after you've pasted it, click on it and then that will allow you to edit the expression directly in that field so you can change 10 over 3 to 20 over 3, 30 over 3, 40 over 3, etc. Once all of the bone constraints have been set up, you can select the first bone again Move the time pointer on the timeline to the first frame and set a keyframe for the offset of, at zero and then move to the hundredth frame and set the offset to minus 100. The way we've got the orientation of the curve means that we're going to have to move the offset to minus 100 for the, um, for the chain to rotate in the correct direction. And then right click on the keyframe markers and change the interpolation method to linear rather than a Bezier. Once the bones are animated using the bone constraint, you need to select the vertices for each link and add a vertex group with the name of each bone for each link. So select, make sure you've got all of separate parts of the link selected and then use Control L to select everything that's joined to that link. Create a vertex group and assign those vertices and change the name of the vertex group to match the name of each bone. You'll also need to add in the object modifiers, add an armature modifier with the uh, name of the armature. Toggle the options so that you can see the modifier acting in edit mode and you'll see that each link doesn't position itself cleanly on the chain and that's because the XYZ locations of those vertices are not 
based around the origin. So you can correct that as you assign each vertex group, open the sidebar using N or, or just dragging it open. And in the median X, Y and Z, set the values to zero and then just work your way along adding the a vertex group for the relevant bone to each link. I'd mentioned before that there was also an object constraint on the track making it follow the curve and we need to remove that and the X, Y and Z location of the object itself are also non-zero and that will cause the track links to move off relative to the bones so those will need to be zeroed. An advantage of using an armature to control the track movement is that you can have a number of different animations. So switch the timeline editor to a dope sheet and select actions as the type of dope sheet. And uh, from the drop down, select or create an action to represent the movement of the tracks. And you could have um, a right track, left track, forward, reverse, half speed, etc. But we'll just have um, one action for both tracks going forward. And um, delete any, um, there's some already some uh, keyframes set, so delete that. And then make sure that the animation runs it would, in the selected action and finally we're going to bake this animation to bone positions and rotations so it can be exported as an FBX or used with other applications. Before you attempt to bake the action it's a good idea to save your project as this is something that occasionally causes Blender to crash and um, you would be very frustrated after typing all those vertex groups and bones to lose everything so do that now. To bake the action you need to be in pose mode with all the required bones selected and then from the top menu choose pose, animation, bake action and then set select only bones, visual keying, clear constraints and overwrite the current action and then that should bake the action um, for every frame on the um, right over this selected action which we've called link action. After baking the constraint driving the animation on the first bone and um, between each of the bones should have been removed but you'll find in the first bone that there's um, a follow path action which should be underlined in red because it refers to a constraint which no longer exists so delete that um, just in case it causes problems later. What we want to do is to duplicate all of this work for the left hand track without having to create all of the vertex groups and bones and so on. And we can do that in Blender for an armature by adding an R on the end of the bones. We want to be symmetrical and then in edit mode we can symmetrize the armature um, and the selected bones will with a dot r on the end will be added to the armature with a dot l on the end there's also an option in the dope sheet to copy and paste keyframes and more importantly to copy and paste flipped so we can transfer all of the keyframes for the right track over to the left track however in order to be able to paste them we have to make the entries for the bones on the left track appear so Select all of the left track bones and then press I to create entries with a single keyframe. Whichever frame you're on, they're all going to be overwritten when you copy the right keyframes, which you do by selecting all the keyframes for the right armature. Right click, copy, then select the keyframes that you've just created for the left part of the armature. Right click and paste flipped. Finally, the object representing the tracks needs to be renamed as links right and then duplicated and then all the vertex groups in the duplicated object need to be renamed the r dot r on the end needs changing to dot l if you add a curve to the scene and set an object constraint on the armature to follow path you can see that the um, tracks rotate with the rest of the armature just as you would expect.